What's up, our family? It's your boy Tay Payton, and today I am going to teach you how to draw the female form. We have a couple demos, we have a little bit of a lecture, and at the end I'm going to show you just kind of an imaginative slash reference study sort of practice thing. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to learn some really cool stuff about drawing girls, so I hope you're ready. Uh, I really am excited to share what I've learned over the years with you in this quick demo, so whether you're a beginner or a little more intermediate, you'll get something from this video. So let's hop in. All right, so hopping into our demo here, we're going to be using some photo ref free courtesy of pexels.com. And what I'd like to do first is just break down some of the shapes that we're seeing so that we can identify and use them later. Oftentimes, I will go ahead and just trace the general outline. So that's one shape that we can see. I'm going to make another layer here so that we can see sort of the general shape of the neck as well as how it connects, especially with the arms raised overhead. And then we'll go ahead, switch colors one more time, and start to subdivide some of these other areas and elements, such as the bust and the rib cage. We'll go a little bluer, make another layer here, and sort of trace the rib cage roughly. So now you can see we've broken that down. And finally, we're going to trace a little bit around the abdominal plates here so then we'll add the belly button for fun so let's grab these pieces here and abstract them from our pose so you can see here some of the general shapes of the female form and because we have them on layers we can just kind of turn them on and off so this is a pretty basic, I would say a pretty common female build, you know, not too thin, not too thick, just nice and kind of averaged out. And this is our general shape before getting down to the hips. You can see that the torso is somewhat cropped by the jeans. And then the, you know, neck is essentially just a cylinder from the front. And we'll get into how it looks from the side in other lessons probably because uh, it has that nice S curve of the spine to it. And then you have, of course, the bust, which are sort of like teardrop shapes. They're not, you know, bulbous and weird and false looking in 99% of cases. And then we have, again, the end of the rib cage, which sort of helps us find the abdominal plate that shoots out from the front of it to protect all of the internal organs. So in that instance, we now understand better the female form from the front with arms overhead and raised. So let's take a look at this and just draw, you know, the overall forms that we're seeing here. And without tracing, just try and give it a little bit of a study. So similar to what we did with our tracing breakdown, we can now go ahead and add those aspects of anatomy that will help us to understand the female figure from a more mannequinized and just simplified perspective, which allows us to draw it better from our head once we get good at this stuff. So I'm seeing I made the torso a little wide. I didn't quite have that nice bell or hourglass shape um, and the ribs are jutting out a little bit. So all we wanna do is erase and do a little adjustment here not a big deal and then of course we'll just falsify the area where the jeans are with a nice simple shape uh, the collarbone we can add those two lines to represent that so you see i'm being pretty economic with my lines it's not perfect you know there's a little bit of sketchiness but we're trying to just capture the shapes of the feminine form and when we're doing that it's always a good idea to if you are working digitally switch colors so that you can think of each component part and begin to break these things up and understand better how the muscles are overlapping, such as these shoulder muscles that um, use the ball and socket joint to go into the pit and line up with the lats as well as run down into the bust based on this anterior deltoid here. So that's the front part of the shoulder. And so the front part of the shoulder is running into the bust, those nice teardrop shapes. Of course, mine are a little high up, I'm noticing, as I'm comparing with the reference. So Let's go ahead and switch colors one more time and just kind of capture the general shape of the arms as they move overhead. And we'll just sort of do the same thing for where the elbows are turning. We'll just change the shape a little bit. 
and as you can see, not a ton of muscular development from a um, hypertrophic standpoint, meaning that there's not a lot of body building going on. The muscle fibers are not enhanced from being torn and rebuilt. Uh, it's just a very simple, uh, sort of a decent diet, probably healthy build um, of female here. Uh, we'll get into more, you know, curvaceous builds or muscle builds in a little bit. Um, I, I watched a great tutorial by Mark Burnett breaking down some of the female anatomy, and that was really cool and helpful to see him do that. So I'd like to give my thoughts on the matter. And in this case, uh, I'm really just trying to be faithful to the shapes that I'm seeing and remind myself how to draw those shapes so that when I'm doing it without this reference, then my uh, female forms will just look that much better. And this is why we're always studying, why we're always doing little drills and learning how to break things down, like I teach you in almost every single video on the Beginner Drawing Course channel. Uh, just really taking the time to look at what these big shapes are and how we can learn from them. So I'm not really going to get too into the face. We'll just mark off where things are with some simple shapes, you know, simple eyebrows. It's not a lot you got to do to get these lines down as long as they're proportionate and their relationship to one another is pleasant. You know, you have a nice little M shape for the mouth. You're just going to shade that in and weight it a little bit. And then you can go ahead and just add that little curve for the lip and you have more or less a decent looking female face. Of course, I've done a lot of studies of the female face. I break a lot of this down in my Simple Anatomy for Artist course, which I think is only available on Gumroad in the Art Maxian bundle. But here you can see that we've just gone ahead and we've looked at this reference and broken it down to see what the upper body looks like of the female form. And this is really helpful for a number of reasons. Uh, as I stated, because then we can do it better without reference, and we can even practice this way of using the reference we just made, and try to imagine these shapes rotated. I'll use a different color, maybe this nice green turquoisey color, and we can still just kind of imagine what these forms would be like from a rotated view. So let's say that it's a similar pose, so there's still going to be this connection with the ball and socket joints. And I'll, again, kind of change color just so we make this a little easier. Got the nice teardrop shapes of the bust, sort of like if you grab a water balloon and hold it by the tip and have it just sort of fall. Uh, that's a good way to remind ourselves of the mass of the breast tissue. And then you have the belly button as well as the rib cage. And we have to think about now um, how we're going to kind of capture the hips from this side and how we're going to capture the relationship leading up to the neck. And it's helpful to have this reference here that we've broken down and this reference. So this is the kind of stuff that really makes you better at drawing, that really forces you to get out of your comfort zone with what you just did, even though it's probably uncomfortable for a lot of uh, you watching this because you are more of the beginner ilk. This is how you study anything in drawing is you just keep looking at its shapes and you try to turn and rotate those shapes to see how well you understand them and that will start to give you a better idea of how things look three-dimensionally and it's just really helpful because it's really uh, forcing you to consider how things are going to shift based on what angle that the body is taking. And as you can see, this straight neck is not going to work from this angle because we're going to need to get more of that curve in there if we're going to believe that that's really the neck there. So uh, we can go ahead and have this other arm coming up, kind of similar to the pose that we're seeing, and remind ourselves where some of the musculature is by looking at the photo, looking at what we just broke down, and still trying to find the difference and the similarities. So again, another great exercise for learning. And of course, the hands are challenging in and of themselves. And we can go ahead and start to break them down. I think it's actually overlapping the other way in this case. So we have to get rid of some of these lines. 
and we'll just start with one joint and getting the thumb sort of right then move out to the rest of the palm and just kind of flatten the hand into that nice sort of scoop shape have the other thumb overlapping it's easier to do with a different color half of the battle is really being able to read your own drawing too uh, being able to break things down to the point where you are ensuring that you can view what you're doing and know how to make it clear to everybody else too. So that's something where you'd have to work at that area for a little bit. Um, but to respect the time here, I'm not going to do that necessarily. And then, of course, you're going to have the lips, which we have to change the angle of that M shape and our little curve for the lower lip there. And then eyelashes, eyelashes, that shape didn't go so well, we'll try again. And I haven't rotated this canvas at all, so there's probably stuff that's looking pretty wonky, but that's why you rotate to always check. And you can redraw your shapes. Make sure that they're lining up properly. So a lot of studying the female form in contrast to the male form is kind of soften most things to curve them out um, but you'll notice that even when we are studying the female form uh, in contrast to the male form you can see here that uh, this is obviously a, an enhanced in terms of muscles figure for the male let's see if we can find a similar female pose um, actually the one we were just using is probably pretty good so yeah as you can see right here uh, the lats of the male figure are far more developed, especially because this guy's a bodybuilder, but uh, it just pushes out way wider in terms of that overall triangular shape. So if we go ahead and trace above this, this is where the rib cage is, we'll just take that shape. And then the waist narrows quite a bit. Whereas if you notice here on these women, because of the ability to bear children, the waist has that width to it. So even though this one's cropped, you can see that it's comparable even with the shoulders raised up in terms of the overall width. So from here to here and from here to here, it lines up pretty well. Whereas with the male, you can see this right here and this right here are different. These two lines are definitely not the same length. So that's one easy way to distinguish your men and your women is by the shoulder girdle. Of course, people are built very differently. And that was an especially exaggerated example because the guy was a bodybuilder. Uh, but there are men with narrower shoulders and wider waists even. Uh, just like there are women with narrower waists and wider shoulders, it all depends on build, genealogy, you know, muscular development, adipose tissue or fat. Um, in this case, we can take a look at this model right here. I'll just blow it up a little bit, make it easier to see. And her shoulders are a little bit wider. So if you take the shoulder girdle here and here, these shoulders are a little wider than the hips. And they're almost equal still on a woman that is not quite so um, curvaceous or has a lot of adipose tissue. So here's some of our studies. Let's turn on some of these other layers. Here's another study. So with this study, uh, you can see that we're still breaking down the torso into various shapes that are helpful for remembering uh, the female forms. I'll do a quick time lapse of this one right now. Uh, same with this one. This was a more challenging study in particular where we're just trying to understand where fat is sitting, where muscle is sitting, and how it differs from the male figure. Uh, so in a lot of cases, when you just do your line of action, which I taught in my How to Draw Poses video, then you're going to have that upper rib cage slash back part. You're going to have all of the places that the organs are sitting, which is the uh, trunk here, and then it's going to get into the glutes or the buns, if you prefer, and those are going to help you locate the hips and legs 
which tend to have this sort of uh, tapered um, cylindrical shape. So we can break this down into a cylinder pretty easily, but as you can see, there are a lot of nuances in these forms, especially when they're contracted and expanded and all the muscle bellies are moving around. Uh, this shape, for example, right here, versus this shape, let me get a different color, versus this shape right here. So that is a huge indicator that the variance, depending on pose, is still something you want to consider. Um, and that's something you learn just by doing lots and lots of studies. So you'll eventually get there just by virtue of, you know, paying attention to the shapes, being willing to make mistakes and correct them. The little wings that sort of hold on to a lot of the muscle mass and allow the shoulders to do their thing and the other muscles of the back and the trapezius to have support, uh, those are important to remember in the female as well, though they are nowhere near as developed, again, as a male's with the much larger back. Um, but, it, but when we get down to the hips and all of uh, the things concerning the pelvis, that's where we can really differentiate and distinguish um, the female forms. So now we're in the really fun part where I get to talk over the demonstration I did where I wasn't talking while I was drawing, which is one of my favorite parts, and I hope it's informational for you too. So essentially what I'm doing is just making sure that I am using reference while also sketching something that is not exactly the reference. And to me, this is still very creative. It's still very fun. It's like using a chord progression that you know you know works but is not the same strumming pattern or has a different instrument for the chord pattern. So it's like just taking something that is as a basis working, like a photo of a woman, it is a you know anatomically accurate thing, whatever, you know, as long as you're not using a crazy lens length or something. And then I'm just drawing something from my imagination, a character that I came up with, sort of a hybrid dog girl sort of uh, character design just for fun. At first she was gonna have blue skin and I'm like already she has ears and a tail, it's kind of a little too weird, you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna go ahead and change that later. But you see, I just start off quickly by sketching everything in, adding in my flat colors, and then going ahead and using a multiply layer for shading, after which I like to go in with another multiply layer and add the subsurface scattering or the core shadow. Well, it's like a little cheat and I'll just change the color temperature of that and run it along the shadow line, after which I'll add some rim light and I'll grayscale things usually to check if my values are popping enough. Uh, and I'll also go ahead and do some other like little fancy color things that I teach you in the Art Maxian bundle. Um, but this is essentially what you do after you're done studying and after you're warmed up is you go ahead and you test what you learn to see if you understand the shapes well enough, understand the things that you were studying. Um, you know, you can still use reference, but you want to deviate enough from the reference to really test your ability and your other artistic stuff you've been working on and kind of keep piecing things together from all the fundamental studies you've hopefully been partaking in, stuff you've been learning from my channel, other channels, whatever. So I just want to say thank you for watching. If if this was helpful for you leave a thumbs up really helps the channel if you share it with somebody that helps it even more and i just really want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the support welcome to all the new subs and all the old ogs i love you i love you and i'll see you guys in the next video take care and happy creating